Hi guys, let's do a quick particle tut. The first thing I want to do is press a numpad one. Uh, by pressing numpad one, I go into front orthographic view. I'm going to zoom in with the mouse. I'm going to press G to grab this, Z to lock it on the Z axis and make sure it's above the red line. Then, then I'm going to press shift A and I am going to add a cone, G to grab it, Z to lock it on the Z axis, then G to, and then click and then press G to grab it again and X, lock on the X axis, and there you have it. Then I'm going to press Shift A again, and we're going to add another shape, which is going to be a UV sphere or icosphere, doesn't really matter. Press G, Z, lock on the Z axis, and then we're going to press G, and uh, X, and there you go. We've got our three shapes. Let's create a new collection here. So you're going to right-click over here, New Collection. We're going to call this Reference Shapes. Boom. And we're just going to add our shapes all in the same place. Why? Because it's nice to work in a neat work environment. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to select the first shape, which is the cone, based on this order from left to right. And then we're going to click on the particle properties. Nothing is yes. So we're going to add one particle property. We're going to leave this on your middle. You can rename this. I'm going to leave it as is. And we're going to change this to 5000. And uh, let me quickly just go into X-ray mode, X-ray and uh, Y-frame mode. And you can see that there's one particle there. And if we move this along, more particles come. Right. So one thing we can do, let's go back to frame one, because that's where it starts. Let's make this, the starting point is also where it ends. This way, it doesn't emit as it goes. Everything is, everything is there from the very beginning. That's what we want in this effect. Once we've done that, we also want to, the, the one issue we have is by frame 50, everything will be gone. So if I press play, frame 50, everything disappears. Um, let's pause. So if I go to, yeah, not that we can see it. Let me just zoom in a bit. There it is. and we press play and then it disappears. So one thing we can do to make sure our particles don't disappear, let's go back to frame one, uh, we're gonna increase the lifespan, well, we're gonna make our animation only 100 frames. In that case, it will loop after 100 or will stop after 100. We'll make the lifetime of our emis emissions 100 frames. Therefore, nothing will disappear. Now that we've done that, we wanna apply the same thing to these two shapes. I actually almost forgot. One thing we do want to change over here is um, the physics. Currently, Newtonian means gravity, basically. And we, want, we don't want gravity, we want none. This way, when we press play, everything just stays where it is, which is going to make perfect sense for the effect we're going for here. If you have Newtonian selected, gravity applies. And uh, you've also got other options here, like keyed, bold, and fluid, but we're going to use none. That's all we need. The other thing you might want to do is change your, click on source over here, and just change faces to vertexes, which will be on the tips on every vertex, or you can change it to volume, which means it'll be all in the middle there, whereas before it was only on the outer side. So you can choose either one. I think uh, faces looks a lot neater. It maintains the shape better. So we're going to use faces in this specific example. Right, now the next thing you want to do is we first want to select the sphere over here, hold and shift, select the cube, and then hold and shift and select the cone. And the important thing to notice is that the, the cone was selected last and that's where we've done all our modifications. And you can tell it was selected last because it's like a yellow color, whereas the others are a darker orange color. And that means you've done it right. So now press Control L on your keyboard. And what we're going to do is we're going to link the, the, the settings we have here to these two objects as well by pressing Control L. And the, what we want to link are the modifiers we created with the material particles. So we select that and boom, everything has the same thing now. Right, now that we have this, the basic shape set up correctly for our particle system, let's create our particle system. So the first thing I want to do is press Shift A, add a mesh, and we're going to use a cube. Now that we have a cube, we're going to select this move icon. It doesn't really matter where we put it. We just wanted to put it out the way. And once you found a place for it, um, we can just chuck it somewhere there. We're going to create a new collection called our primary 
particle system and we are going to put this cube where is it now there we go this cube over here and call it our particle system because it really is our primary particle system just so we don't get the, these shapes confused as to what does what and now we're going to go on to our particle properties we're going to add this and we're going to make sure every all the settings match up to what we did with the other shapes so 5000 i believe is what we selected and I believe we used um, start and end at one, and I believe we used the lifespan of 100. And at the source, we used faces, so that's fine, it's already like that. And at the physics, we, I believe we had initially none. However, we're dealing with our primary particle, so we do not want to use none, we want to use keyed. Now that we've got keyed select, uh, selected, we could choose loop, um, but we're going to use relations. And we're going to add a relation, and then we're going to click on this, on this eyedropper tool, and we're going to select the first one. Then we're going to plus, we're going to add a new relation, and we're going to select the second shape. And we're going to press the plus icon, and then we're going to select the third shape. Now, before we uh, move on to the next step, I'm going to just press uh, numpad 1 to be in front orthographic view. I'm going to click on this cone over here. I'm going to press G to move it, and I'm going to move it, and I press X to lock it on the X-axis, just to move it a little bit away, so we can really take a look at this animation. I'll do the same with this sphere here. I press G, X, and move it a little bit further away. Once, now that we've got all these things selected, we're going to click on our particle system, which is that uh, random sphere that we're not using, our primary particle system, and we're going to click on the first yeah, which, uh, shape here, yeah, which is the cone. And we want, the, we want this primary particle system to be on this cone at, honestly, zero frames all the way up to how long? Let's make it, we've got 100, so we make each one roughly uh, 25, right? And now we're going to select the next shape. And we want this to be on the next shape at, let's say, 35. And we're going to add 25 to 35, which is 40, 50, 60. At 60, it will leave, which means it's got 10 frames to, oh, let's click on that again. It's got 10 frames to get to the final sphere particle system, because um, currently it is on 60, which means this needs to start at 70 frames. See, we're keying the, the frames as to when the animation should begin. And we could leave this, or we could just set it to... 100 at the end. Either way, it wouldn't matter because that's kind of where our animation ends. Now let's see if this is actually working. But before we begin, just to, uh, what you can do is you can click on this filter icon over here and you can also include uh, what you want to disable in the render view. So currently everything is enabled. I don't need to disable anything, but all the reference images I will hide. And you can disable this in the reference image as well if you ever needed to render this. And I'm going to press play over here, or spacebar, and we will see it change shape. And because we chose faces, it looks like this. Now, if you don't like that style, which it doesn't really look nice in my view, let's go to frame one, we can go back uh, to each reference image. So let's choose the cone. Uh, let's, let's actually just turn this back on. Let's, let's, let's start off with the cone over here. Uh, let's click on the particle system and let's change this to volume and let's change all of them to volume because I, I've got a feeling that we'll have a much better effect. They will change to volume but our core particle system also needs to change to volume. Now that we've done that and we hide our reference shapes, which you can also hide in the render view if you selected that, let's see how this looks. See that looks a little bit cleaner and just like that we've created our first particle system animation. I hope that helps. Please like and subscribe.